The story starts with a foreword of the real Jen Broberg, who experienced what you're about to witness. She wants the world to be aware of the things that happened to her as a warning for other families. In Pocatello, Idaho, in 1975, Mary Ann Broberg says goodnight to her daughter Jan. Jan tries to fall asleep but she hears a thud and gets startled. In the shadows, a figure emerges from the window. A few years before this, the family go to meet the new neighbors. Jan has two younger sisters named Karen and Susan. Robert Bachtold, nicknamed B, is super friendly to the family. He introduces his wife Gail Bachtold. The Bachtold family has three boys and a young daughter. They have a picnic dinner indoors while they all bond. From afar, Robert notices Jan listening in on Gail's alien story. Robert tells the family they can just call him B since there's already a Bob, Jan's dad. They ask Jan to showcase her singing talents. While Jan sings, everyone stares in or especially B by the end of the night. The two families swear to do this again some other time. Jan stares at the skies mesmerized after hearing the alien story. The families are shown throughout the years bonding and attending the Mormon church. They take family pictures together and spend the holidays as a family. B even helps out the family change out their tire. By 1974, B brings Jan out for ice cream then brings Jan home. Bob looks a little creeped out by the arrangement, but doesn't say anything. On October 17th of January has a piano lesson and it was this day that changed everything. Bob tells the kids they'll be doing puzzles tonight. Jan is super interested in UFOs and sees a newspaper article about it. Bob is annoyed and wishes that B would stop with all the UFO stuff. At his florist job, Bob gets a call from B and B wonders if he can take Jan horseback riding after her piano lesson. Bob says they'll be doing a puzzle tonight, but B insists that he promised Jan and doesn't want to disappoint her. Bob is firm on his decision and doesn't want his daughter to go horseback riding with B. B then asks Marianne if he can take Jan out horseback riding after her piano lesson. Marianne says yes this should be fine but she'll confirm with Bob. Later, Marianne asks Bob to reconsider and let Jan go horseback riding. Bob is firm on his decision and says he's the father and that he doesn't want Jan to go horseback riding. B goes to the bank to deposit a check of $27,000 as he taps his fingers nervously. Apparently he sold his business. He goes home to pack some things and then does a weird creepy happy dance in front of the mirror. Jan gets picked up for school and is disappointed that she won't get to go horseback riding. Later, B comes to the house to pick up Jan. But Marianne is confused. Jan goes to the kitchen expecting to go horseback riding. Marianne is firm on her husband's decision. So Jan goes back to her room. Marianne says it doesn't make sense for B to take her horseback riding because it's out of B's way. B makes a roundabout excuse and says he doesn't even want to go horseback riding. Then, he seduces Mary Ann right before Jan enters the room. B says he'll see Jan for horseback riding, and Mary Ann is left speechless so she lets it happen. Mary Ann rops off Jan to her piano lesson, and lets the piano teacher know that B will be picking up Jan for horseback riding right after. In his car, B is handling some pills. B picks up Jan after her piano lesson then gives Jan an allergy pill. She happily takes it. Eventually Jan is getting drowsy so she takes a nap. B stares at her in a very creepy way. Bob realizes that Jan isn't home and he's pissed. Mary Ann apologizes and said they will be home by 6.30. Unfortunately they don't come home. So Mary Ann calls Gail to see if she knows the name of the horseback riding ranch. She doesn't know then Gail says she hopes they didn't get a flat tire. Gail tells them not to worry because B has done this before. She starts to make excuses for B and says that it might be due to his manic depressive states. But Bob doesn't think that's the case. Gail then hesitantly tells them about a motor home that B was secretly working on. Jan's parents think it might be time to call the police, but Gail says it's a bit too early to do that. Gail agrees to take Marianne to the place where B parks the motor home. Meanwhile Bob calls around to see if anyone knows the name of the horse ranch. One man emphasized that B loves that Bob is always around to give him a hand. Bob is creeped out by this sentence. Once the wives arrive at the parking garage, Gail peeks through a crack of the garage and doesn't see the motor home. Mary Ann then becomes suspicious as to why B would secretly have a motor home. Once they are back home, Gail says it's obviously car trouble. However, Mary Ann says it's probably time to call the police. Right before they make a call, Karen enters the room wondering if her sister has come home yet. Mary Ann then reaches for the phone to call the police, and Gail becomes hysterical. She tells them that B has been struggling mentally. She talks about how much B loves kids, and how they were about to adopt a Mexican girl. Gail says the girl was as cute as a button, but the mother wouldn't let her daughter go. She said B was super disappointed that he had to leave the Mexican girl behind. Mary Ann says that explains the depression, but they still have to call the police. Gail then makes more excuses and says they should wait until tomorrow. 
especially since B would never forgive Mary Ann if she calls the police now. Mary Ann decides to do it anyway. She asks the cop if anyone reported a car broken down or if B's car got into an accident. But there's nothing. Gail cries in relief that this is the only thing Mary Ann decides to inquire. Mary Ann thinks B will take good care of Jan. Meanwhile, the film transitions to B's car. The window has been shattered and it's abandoned. As they lay awake that night, Mary Ann remembers B whispering that he wished he had met Mary Ann earlier. Eventually, Jan wakes up from her long slumber and she's bound to a bed. She tries to struggle out of it and calls for B. A recording keeps repeating female companion in a loop. The recording then says you have been chosen and their names are Zeta and Zethra. Jan needs to help save their dying planet. Jan is one of them and she must complete her mission. The next morning, the Broberg family eat breakfast and get up quickly when the phone rings. It's only Gail but she hasn't heard anything from B and Jan. Gail is surprisingly perky. Then Bob and Karen go out to look for Jan. Meanwhile, Jan is no longer bound to the bed. She finds food in the motor home. Then a recording starts again about how Jan needs to find a male companion to start her mission. It tells her to go to the front of the motor home. She finds B there who is pretending to wake up from a long slumber. He hugs Jan and his head is bleeding. He acts confused and wonders what is going on. B explains that he saw lights over the car and that's when they saw them. He said that the aliens didn't look strange at all. They can look like regular people. Apparently the aliens wanted Jan and B tried to fight them off but they overpowered him. While crying, Jan says the aliens talk to her and they want her to save their planet. The recording told her that Mary Ann is her real mom, but her real dad is the alien leader. She thinks the male companion they're referring to is B, and if she didn't complete the mission then Karen would go blind. And Susan would have to take Jan's place because Susan is part alien too. B comforts Jan and says he's scared as well. B says the aliens definitely exist and they must do what they say. B wipes Jan's tear and says Jan is very special. Back at his house, Bob is confused as to why Gail is in his home. By this time, Bob calls the police but they advise him to call the FBI. Gail tries to convince them not to call at all. Mary Ann calls anyway but they are closed until Monday. They all agree that if B is not back by Monday they are going to call the FBI. On Monday, the FBI show up. Pete asks them a series of questions about B. Pete tells them that they found B's car and it was broken into from the inside. He says B faked it. The FBI then question Gail, but her main concern is trying to keep this a private situation. She tells them that B has been giving Jan rugs. Gail saw B emptying pill capsules the other week. The parents are surprised to hear this. Mary Ann tells them about the allergy pills that B gives Jan. B's psychiatrist enters their house and talks to the FBI privately. Pete then tells the parents that the psychiatrist thinks B is a pedophile. The parents look confused as they'd never heard the term before. Meanwhile, Jan and B bond some more. Then he makes Jan take an allergy pill. B pretends to freeze in place. Then the recording starts telling Jan that she will have a special child with a male companion. The FBI wants the parents to go public about their missing child, but the parents don't want to cause a ruckus. Pete convinces them so they can get news outlets to stop B if he tries to flee the country with Jan. B is now crossing the border into Mexico with Jan, who is pretending to be B's son. The border police let them go since they think Jan is a boy. Two weeks later, after receiving tons of support from the Mormon community, Jan is still not home. In Mexico, Jan and B go to the beach and Jan still takes her allergy pills. In her real-life interviews, Jan talks about being coherent during some of the instances B would be on top of her. She would just stare at the motorhome skylight. Later, Jan is feeling homesick and wishes things would just go back to what it used to be before. B tries to cheer her up by showing her the stars. He shows her where Zeta and Zethra are from, then reminds her of her mission to save the alien planet. B's brother Joe, Gets a call from B. The FBI tell Mary Ann this, but they are clearly annoyed that Gail is constantly at the Broberg's house. They get Mary Ann to talk to Joe. Joe says he doesn't want to get involved in any of this. Gail uses her time to ask if B left her any money. Mary Ann begs Joe to let B know that they miss Jan and hopes that Joe can help them find them. Joe said that B is only willing to come back if they allow B to marry Jan. This would keep B innocent of any kidnapping charges. Bob denies this request, but Gail says they should do it if they can get Jan back. Bob yells at Gail to go home. Pete says they have a chance to track B's location now when he calls his brother back. B eventually calls Joe back, so Joe does his best to lengthen the conversation. Joe lies to B and says the Brobergs agreed to his request of marrying Jan. By the end of it, they have tracked B's location in Mazatlan, Mexico. Pete warns the parents that Jan may be brainwashed. Mary Ann doesn't think this is the case and rushes to get Jan's birth certificate so they can get Jan in Mexico. She realizes that B stole Jan's birth certificate. Meanwhile, the police found the motor home and raid it. 
Jan is afraid of the cops and doesn't want to go with them. B tells her to make sure to finish the mission, and she promises that they will. She looks at the creepy man in the rearview mirror as the cops take them away. They are put in separate prison cells. B manages to bribe the cop with his wedding ring so he could have two minutes to talk to Jan. They hug. And he reiterates what the recording told Jan. He says she shall not have any physical contact with anyone other than her male companion. He even says Jan's fake father Bob is not allowed to touch her either. B said Zeta will be watching them all the time, and they need to follow for rules. 1. They can't tell anyone about the aliens. 2. They can't talk about the mission. 3. They can't talk about the sleepy allergy pills. 4. They can't talk about the baby stuff. If any of these rules are broken then the aliens will hurt Jan's family. B gives her ring to remind her of the mission and a symbol of their bond. The guard finally takes Jan away while B screams that he loves Jan. Eventually Jan is reunited with her parents. They hug but Jan steps away from her father and only hugs her mom. Jan wonders why B can't go with them. Meanwhile, Bob receives a piece of paper. It's a marriage license between B and Jan. He is shocked and disgusted. The sisters finally reunite and she's happy as she looks at the sky. Jan puts her new ring away for now. In her nighttime prayers, she asks God to protect her family including B and give her strength to complete the mission. This is the only first two episodes of the series. More goes on and B even finds a way to abduct Jan a second time. Let us know if you'd like us to continue the series. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.